The longer you're in this business, the longer you realize you got to find a group of guys that you can coach. Like, it's not necessarily the highlight film. It's not necessarily the accolades. It's who at the end of the day at 6 a.m. we can be in here and, and will respond to our personality. There was no national tournament trip this winter, but Brad Hoyt clearly still sees spun forward positives for his trailblazers in the aftermath. I think at the end of the year, I can look back and say it was the right group because they hung in throughout the course of the year, which has kind of been our thing, right? Like it's kind of been a slow start and kind of get to the end of the year, but that requires really high character guys to be able to do that. So I, I, again, it didn't end the way we wanted it to, but to even be in that conversation and to be at a point to where losing in the region championship game doesn't end the way you want it to, I think was a real, real reflection of the personality of this group. There are, of course, dots to be connected, most obviously rebuilding the front court post Chandler Bevins. It's a good question. Um, we're, we're honestly trying to figure that out. We've signed a really, a really solid young man from Houston, Texas. Um, six, seven, comes from the same group that Aziz Fadika came from. Um, so we trust that, that sort of pipeline at a really high level. I think in some ways it's very similar, raw, um, has some development to do, but the right personality. So for us right now, it starts there. We're really excited about a couple other young men that, that we're talking to here in May and kind of a different recruiting sort of year. But we've got to stay versatile. We've got to stay versatile like Chandler was. I think part of Chandler's impact was his versatility offensively. But almost equally important, maximizing a holdover group of combo forwards and guards who are versatile for sure, but whose second year growth is critical to the overall picture. There's no doubt. And, and I tell our returning group, like, you've got to be better. And, and, and really the way we coin it is there's a race. Your job is to get better individually. My job is to try to find better players. That, that's not in a, um, in a threatening way, but that's kind of the process that this level is in, is we try to find better guys or guys that can do different things. They've got to add new tools to their toolbox. But again, it always goes back to are they willing and, and are they smart enough to be able to figure that out? Guys like McKinney and Javion Taylor and Jarvis Jennings and Braden Kilby, like that group, Cooper Smith, that group, is the right group and I'm really excited to see in this weird time what kind of progress they can make physically but I know mentally and leadership wise we've made huge strides these last six weeks. The biggest given moving forward is starting with an elite floor leader from day one. I mean, it, it talk about the right fit. I mean, gosh dang it. Like Aaron, and again for us, and it sounds a little coach speak, but it always goes back to personality. If you got the right personality, we can make the rest of it work. And we can, we can maneuver things offensively and defensively to be able to fit skill sets. But you've got to have the right personality to come in here every day and kind of grind through the early part and get ready for the end of the year. And Aaron, Aaron exemplifies that at such a high, high level of just getting his work done, getting his business done. At the same time, I thought if you watched us, you saw his progression as a player. Um, early on, he allowed the game to come to him, kind of had that year off, trying to kind of sort out what that looks like. And by the end of the year, he was a little alpha um, to where he, he, he put that he put that sort of cape on that he did at times um, for Coach Douglas and just said, hey, I'm not going to allow us to lose in this environment. So that progressed. I don't think that was an early year thing, but that was a late year thing. And, and w when you start talking about our group and use him as our focal point, that's a really good sign. And to that Aaron shoot positive, Brad Hoyt gets to add KHQA Player of the Year, Gabe Cox as well. Yeah, if, I, if I think about that, I smile when I go to sleep at night. So the, the, I, I'm so anxious to get Gabe in here. Um, so anxious to get around him and get him around our guys and not because I think his skill set is through the roof but he fits man like he, he and we're, we're talking almost every other day he, he's talking about his workouts and what he's doing right now and how excited he is to get engaged in this thing he's another one has a little bit of a chip on his shoulder to kind of show that he belongs in big game environments at this level um, but yeah you, you start putting the puzzle pieces together um, and again there's no guarantees winning is hard I mean winning is really really hard I don't care what level you're at so there's no guarantees there but Gabe's Gabe's another one that if you're going to go into the fight, you want him on your team. And in compliment to those two, Harold Wig Player of the Year, Drake Hamill to help out in the scoring department. I, I, offensively, he, he's as far along and had to do as many things as anyone we've had here in a long time um, at the high school level. Kind of a Gabe, Gabe McKenzie kind of 
high school career where his versatility really showed at the high school level, which again, I think is transferable to the college level. It's so critical for us to find guys that have the transferable skill set. In Drake, when you have multiple skill sets offensively, I think there's a handful of things in there that will transfer to the college level really, really early. Now, he's got some work to do and defensively, and there's some pieces to his game that I'm curious on sort of what, what that transforms into. But if you're talking about a guy that's skilled with the ball in his hands, that's been asked to do a variety of different things with the ball in his hands, um, again, the Gabe McKenzie's, the Paxton Harmons of the world um, have been really, really good here with the right group around him. So I'm excited to see his progress. But honestly, the most critical get in this celebrated local recruiting class may have been the first domino to fall because elite perimeter shooting, particularly within Brad Hoyt's system, is quite the tentpole. I think Brody Gronewald's a really good early comparative, and that's not fair to Brandon. I mean, Brody had an unbelievable four-year career in college, so that's really not fair to Brandon. But if I'm trying to find comparables, um, Brandon is Brody is Brandon's um, to, in a lot of ways. And it's not just their ability to shoot the ball. Competitive, high IQ, isn't afraid of the moment, wants to get really good. Um, so you combine that, and Brody was the ultimate chip on the shoulder kind of guy. Like that, that's who Brody was. He didn't think he belonged. He wanted to prove to everybody he belonged. I think Brandon has a little bit of that same personality that he, he wants to show people he belongs on the right stage. That's a great starting point. Um, and